Hey there, Mako family. This is the Mako Athletics Show. We're going to be looking at doing this a podcast at some point, but right now we are not on Spotify. We will look at that, but for now we're going to find us on YouTube. The whole purpose of this show is to, A, give you guys some things to do inside and outside of the gym, tips and tricks that we're personally doing, uh, things that we're focusing on that you can gain knowledge and insights from to improve your training, health, uh, and, and just overall fitness. Yeah, and for us guys, this is you know we're always talking about training together, and you know really just wanted to you know have a more formal setting where we can you know get a little bit more out of it, document a little bit more of it, but also give that knowledge back to you guys. So uh, you know a lot of what we're going to talk about is what we're personally experiencing and, and going through in the gym ourselves. So yeah, so just kind of to start out, just this is going to be the first episode. We do want to kind of go back over some of our personal training backgrounds. Uh, specialties as far as what we focus on, as far as coaching, um, what we're currently working on, and personal pursuits. So let's just kick it off, Aaron. Let's talk about your training background. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, anytime anybody asks me about just training background in general, I always go back to just, like, you know, where I started youth athletics. So, you know, growing up, I did a little bit of everything. But by the time I got to high school, really specialized in just two sports, right, um, hockey and soccer. So, you know, grew up typical kind of athlete path, rec sports, into some more organized play, competitive play by the time you're in high school. And then, um, yeah, just continued with that through college. So I did get to play four years of Division One college soccer. Um, and then for a few years following that, I played in the, the USL professionally. Um, short career, injuries kind of sidetracked, you know, competitive soccer for a while and really wasn't training. I took like a full two years off and, and got kind of dumpy. And uh, that's when I started getting back into CrossFit, did that for a very short period before I got bit by the weightlifting bug. So I think that was about seven years ago now and have been training specifically for, for weightlifting ever since then. Right. Yeah. So if you guys don't know, Aaron and I grew up together. We've known each other since we were like 12 or something like yeah, that. Right. right 11, right 12. Yeah. So uh, we, we do know each other's training history, and we do come from the same uh, tutelage as far as, like, back in high school of who, who trained us. Uh, Mick Roberts is our, our guy, and um, those of you guys don't know him, um, if anybody's watching this from Troy, you guys know who Mick <laughs> Roberts is. We do believe that he is who instilled the intensity that we have today in the way that we train, even though we both train in two <laughs> separate disciplines. Uh, my background is I, you know, when I was – Really young, I played, you know, baseball, basketball. Uh, really, those were the main ones, and I found out that I was kind of like too. I mean, I was too rough for it. I mean, realistically, like I got kicked out of a basketball game for for uh, running over somebody on the baseline. I got thrown out of a, a baseball game for trucking the first baseman, and I don't condone any of that stuff. And, and realistically, you know, that that isn't ideal to do. Um, but like, I'm pretty sure someone just told me one day, like, you should wrestle you to play football so started wrestling in uh, junior high state wrestler um, in, in junior high and then uh, placed eighth in state my senior year as well really focused on that and um, also played football you know was an all district football player uh, in high school after high school didn't really pursue anything collegiately I was kind of burnt out and uh, I mean at the level I was going to be which is like division two II, division three I was gonna be paying for most of it anyway and just didn't want to pay to play um, did some community college and we lived together and, and you were doing soccer and I found CrossFit. We both found CrossFit actually the same day. I got really into it though in 2008. Um, was able to train hard, make the games in 09. And then, you know, I would say the biggest, like one of the biggest base of my athletic career isn't what people consider athletics, which is um, the special operations pipeline of combat control for the Air Force, where um, I really learned to, you know, not only hammer as far as like pushing the intensity and, and having a no quit attitude and, and not falling out of runs that you just have to make time trials on and swimming and all this other stuff. Being willing to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Willing to suffer. Uh, but the thing, the same thing is like I, I graduated combat control school and uh, had an injury that basically, you know, shut down my career. I paralyzed my long thoracic nerve, which basically controls your, your shoulder blade and your scapula and uh, caused a wing scapula. And, and so I got pulled out of training um, had the opportunity to go to the Battlefield Airman Clinic there uh, at Herbert Field and really learn why it happened and 
how it happened and, and, and really got into movements and how to move um, and was able to rehab myself. Now, unfortunately, like I was delayed so far that they were like, hey, we can push you out of the career field. And, and to be honest, I made the choice. I was like, yeah, I'll just get out. Um, I get out, train in the garage, compete at the beach brawl. This is like a year after the, the nerve palsy and uh, got the job at Mako. So, you know, I've been hammering CrossFit for a while, uh, you know, with the move and the building and stuff. I and definitely having kids um, has delayed, you know, put, put training on a back seat. But I would say, you know, now currently probably back after it more so than I've ever been and uh, been super consistent and, and really excited to kind of find the athlete again. Yeah, yeah, it's been, you know, obviously, like, we talk so much about, like, what we need to be doing in training, and we help each other write our programming that we're writing for ourselves. Uh, it's been really fun to watch you get back into training. Um, like, I don't think a lot of people have heard specifically, like, what you're training for right now, though. Like, right, you, right. Yeah, you have some specific goals. Yeah, I kind of keep it on under wraps. You know, I, I don't really want to get any, like, instant gratification of saying, like, hey, look what I'm training for. Good job, man, because I haven't done anything yet. Um, uh, so I picked, uh, I've really, really been interested in ultra, um, racing and running mostly because I think it's, it's a lot of a suffer fest and, and I do feel like I've lost a part of that or you know, that I had 10 years ago when I was going through that pipeline and, and you know, I've been like, thinking is like, have I just gotten soft or, or what is it really? And, and so I just kind of decided like, Hey, I'm going to do this, but I took, so I couldn't run no pain. Me, I, mean, I had a lot old in, knee injury that. Um, really, you know, bone on bone knee is what they would say. And, um, you know, as far as like the lateral part of my knee. And so like, hey, you're not going to be able to run. You're not going to be able to do this. You're not going to be able to do that. Um, so I kind of have taken the approach to really, you know, I took this huge base phase, did a bunch of blood flow restriction training, did a bunch of uh, isometric stuff and just graded exposure, slowly building up my tolerance to where now I can run and I'm, I'm running 20 miles a week. Uh, but the key thing is there is like I'm not trying to be a runner. So uh, I, I want to be good at running, but I also want to still lift. So I'm lifting, you know, five days a week, getting stronger, was able to, you know, recently just looking at my in-body, was able to lose a lot of fat mass, but still gain muscle mass, even putting down that mileage. And that's where I'm kind of doing some self-experimentation to, to better understand the physiology of like training with nutrition, with pairing these two modalities that technically no one's like you can do both um and, ma and maybe i won't be like the best at either but i, I expect myself to be fairly competitive at both and, and for that it means like a really strong 50k run which is gonna be in the trails in, in october at the same time like i'd like to be able to you know snatch and clean something that gets me just a whiff in like the next couple of years of like an ao finals event or something like that where i can even consider it um, but being pain free is like the number one thing is being able to do all of this and move my knee forward and not put, put like my health and longevity on the back end of performance, which I did throughout probably my entire CrossFit career. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so let's kind of talk, uh, right now, like let's go coaching specialty, Aaron, let's just talk about what you're specialized <laughs> in and, what, and who you're coaching and the type of people you coach right now. Yeah. You know, so I think, you know, those of you guys that know me, those of you guys that see me in here, like I'm. I'm a weightlifting nerd, so I think um, yeah, if you guys understood my background a little bit better, you might understand why I've gone so deep in, into the rabbit hole of, of strength. So, you know, in terms of my specialty, it's weightlifting and I think just, you know, strength training in general right now. Um, I was never a strong athlete, like Brandon would maybe label me even like a weak athlete at one point, um, especially on the barbell. So just, you know, really devoting time to a weakness and then kind of falling in love with it is, is what happened to me with weightlifting. Um, so I do run our barbell club here. Um, you know, really, uh, the, the thing that I love doing the most is the competitive side of weightlifting. So like this weekend, we're going up to Atlanta, taking a couple people up for their first meet. Got a couple of our youngsters that are looking to potentially qualify for like their first national events and going and coaching at those big events is really what gets, gets me going. Um, but I work with a lot of different types of people too. So like personal training clients, you know, people who are coming in and saying they want to prioritize you know, strength and, and health and longevity. Like I have a lot of those people too. And those people are always so fun to work with. Um, yeah. Just seeing that instant uh, uh, growth and, the, and the, the, those newbie gains that they get and just seeing how much better they feel and how much better they're moving. That's yeah, I think you're able to use, like you're able to do the competitive weightlifting side, but I think you also do a really good job with the specialty population, a little bit older population that people are trying to 
you know, maintain or grow muscle mass while they're in their 60s. And then when it feel good, I think you have a good track record of, of keeping those people consistent, injury free and moving forward. And I think that that's a really good thing as a coach. As far as the like the strength, as far as an athlete quality, I would say like if, if anyone, you know, people ask me what Aaron's numbers are now. And I'd like the way I can describe it is like three years ago, I, I would consider him, you know, weak in the sense of like a strength athlete. He's always been fast and explosive. Um, but it's been really cool to watch him over the past three years, like become, okay, he's strong for his weight class now. And then now I'm like, dude, he's just strong. Like, so it's really been really cool to see that you become like a strong athlete um, across the board, weight, weight or not, you know what I mean? Body weight or not. So that's been really awesome. And just uh, note that he said over the years, guys. It, years, it, yeah. It, it takes a while. <laughs> yeah, it definitely takes a long time. Um, you know, I've uh, been trying to get people to think of this thing like the day-to-day -day consistencies are what build the monthly progress the yearly progress so it's learning how to be consistent um, and not beat yourself up on down days you know and that, that's a big thing we're going to go over in this show consistently is like how to create frameworks around whether you're injured whether you're not injured whether you're having a bad day you're having a good day how to kind of focus on training and so hopefully we'll be able to drop some of those insights in this show in the future uh, my coaching specialty Right now, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a CrossFit coach. I'm a CrossFit level three coach. I will be getting my level four when, when a, uh, basically a date and time opens up. And what that really means, guys, is if you have your, your level one, which anyone can go do, level two, you technically can get it after a certain amount of time. Level three, it's all a written test. So you have to actually have the understanding knowledge of, of everything from seeing, cueing, correcting movements to um, physiology to uh, basically just everything that encompassing health and coach training. It's a really good... I think it's a really good test for the level three. And then the level four is just practical. So you're going to go and you're going to coach, I think it's like eight to 15 people that you don't know, and you're going to put them through a CrossFit workout. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to that. So for me, as like a specialized, I will always try to be the best class coach ever. I mean, I, I think, you know, if you are, if you guys are ever familiar, those of you guys have been to level ones, if you know who um, you know, Chuck Carswell is, I think he's like the gold standard. And and really look up to him and I try to em em emulate those guys when I'm out on the floor and try to do the best job. As far as programming wise, I've worked with uh, Shannon Aiken who's won the Masters uh, games, CrossFit games twice now. He's gotten second once. Um, was able to really oversee his training one of those years, but now he's back. So I think he has a good handle on what he's doing, but hopefully I can give him some insights down the road when we're getting geared up. Uh, but I would say the, the people that I can affect and positively impact the most is what I would consider a military athlete. And I think that, that, and that's even everyday people, but it's people that want to be stronger, leaner, can move their body weight well, and also run fast. Like those are all these three disciplines that I'm focusing my training on. And I've had um, success with preparing people for, uh, you know, special operations, um, you know, uh, pipelines, whether that be floods or uh, the military or the, the Marine, uh, basic recon course, preparing somebody for that right now. Uh, so those kind of courses are what I really specialize in. I love writing that program. I love the mindset that it takes to get through those kind of pipelines. Uh, so I would say that's probably my main focus or what I'm what I'm niched in at. Yeah, yeah. And then back to just I know you kind of touched on like certs and things that you're doing. Um, yeah, I didn't even kind of mention that. Like I am a level two cr uh, CrossFit trainer and as well as a level two USAW. I think most of my development bucket what I've poured the most into is weightlifting um, and now for you know growth in, in those regards for me personally it's uh, you know actually developing athletes so it's based on an athlete quota so you know, as I have people go and compete at national events that's where you know, you'll see my you know, standing as a, as a coach right it grows yeah it grows like now it's like you've proved it on paper you've completed the courses now you have to prove it in the actual real world which yeah. I love about how USAW does that. You know, it's like, hey, okay, cool, you're taking a cert, awesome. I think that would be kind of cool if CrossFit adopted something like that, where it's like, well, how many people have you helped lose 100 pounds? Or how many people, yeah. you know, like, I don't know. I think that that's cool that they put that, like, what is your actual, you know, yeah, rubber meets the road, what are you who doing? Who put on the big stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah which is really cool. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much everything on this show as far as, like, what we're looking at doing. Uh, as far as like how this thing will flow, any kind of questions or topics you guys would like to see, that's really where we're going to be able to kind of get this conversation going and get everything rolling. Um, when we talk about, we'll, we'll be fielding questions or like picking things out. If you guys want to reach out to us directly, I think Instagram is probably the way you can find us both directly. 
Mine is Brandon Massey, all or Brandon underscore Massey. Uh, that's my Instagram handle. And you guys can DM me any kind of questions or requests there. That's probably the best spot. And where where are you? Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, kind of two places there. You can either reach out through Mako Barbell Club or a Denny19. Uh, Denny is an N-E-Y, not like the restaurant. Right, right. Cool. All right, guys, we're looking forward to do, putting these down and, and hopefully sharing some knowledge with you guys and starting some conversations. And uh, if uh, we don't see you in the gym, we hope you're getting after it somewhere. Let's go.